Hi, I'm Maria from Sew Local Stitch Lounge. Today I'm going to show you how to make this sewing machine cover and we'll learn how you can adjust the measurements so that it fits your machine and you're going to learn how to make your own piping. It also has a very nice little pocket with an invisible snap. So satisfying. So here are the supplies I'll be using for the sewing machine cover. We've got a piece of canvas. You may have two pieces of canvas if your fabric is the measuring tape fabric. And you'll also have a piece of quilting cotton for the lining of the pocket. And a piece of quilting cotton that is cut into bias strips that's going to cover your piping. Then you'll have some piping cord, some thread, and a set of magnetic snaps. And these are going to be invisible. You won't see them inside. And then you've got your instructions and other things you're going to need are you need either a zipper foot or a piping foot and scissors, pins, clips, measuring tape, all that good stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to measure the sewing machine and you'll want to do this to just double check and see if you need to alter the dimensions at all. And so I'm going to go across the front and my sewing machine is about 15 inches, which is very average for a medium sized sewing machine. At the back, it is slightly bigger. It goes to about 15 and a half. And we also need the height, and I've got 10 and 3, about around 11 inches tall. And then the depth, I have 6 and 3 quarters of an inch. Here's how I figured out my cutting width. So I started with the measurement from the machine, and I did it in centimeters because centimeters are so much easier to add than fractions and in inches. So yay metric. I wanted a couple centimeters of wiggle room for putting the cover on. I didn't want it to be super tight. So I added two centimeters of extra room and then two centimeters for seam allowance, one centimeter on either side. So that ends up with 43 centimeters total cutting width. So to figure out the height for the front and back of the sewing machine cover, I started with the machine height, which is 28 centimeters. I added seam allowance of just one centimeter because there's only one seam at the top. And then at the bottom, we do have a hem. So I'm just going to do a two centimeter hem. So that gives me a total of 31 centimeters. For the gusset, we need to know the machine depth, which is 17 and a half centimeters. We'll give it some extra room for two centimeters. And then we need two centimeters of seam allowance. And that brings us to 21 and a half centimeters. To figure out the length of the gusset, we need to go up the side, across the top, and down the other side. So that means we need the height times two, we need the width, and then we also need to add hems on either end. So we need two hems as well, and that was two centimeters each. So that total comes up to 109 centimeters. So we can go a little bit longer than that. It's always good to have a little bit of extra in your gusset, and then you can always just trim it off later. So these are all the pieces cut. I have the front and back, then I have the pocket and the pocket lining, and then the gusset. I have a curved corner cutter from Creative Grids. I'm gonna use the one and a half inch corner. You'll just go around the top corners on the front and back, as well as the top left corner of the pocket. And if you don't have one of these handy rulers, then you can use a cup or a plate or something. A cup is a good size and it makes like just a small curve, like the one and a half inch that I'm using on the ruler. So we've got the top corners of the front and back curved, and I also have the top left corner of the pocket curved. So now we're gonna take the bias strips and we're gonna sew them all together end to end, one at a time. And once you've done your first seam, you have to keep in mind that you now have a right and wrong side of the fabric, even though it is a solid color. You don't end up with having a seam sticking out in the right side. Okay, so now we're ready to make the piping. And if you haven't done this before, it's pretty easy. We need to use a zipper foot or a piping foot if you happen to have one. The zipper foot lets you get close to the bump, which is the piping. And you can use any type of cord or string that is the right size that you want for your piping. So I'm all ready to start sewing the piping. I have the cord tucked into the wrong side of the piping. 
and I just put one pin because I'm going to be adjusting it as I go. We'll just be lining up the two raw edges and sewing as close as we can to the cord. We've got one long continuous piece of piping and we're going to start by putting it in the pocket. So we're going to start at the bottom left side of the pocket and we'll line up the raw edge of the piping to the raw edge of the pocket. We're going to go up the side around that corner and straight across the top and we're going to stop at the far right corner. So to go around that corner, I clipped into the seam allowance of the piping and that allows it to spread open and it goes around really smoothly. We're trying to sew on the same stitching line that you sewed the piping together with. We need to find the center of the pocket lining so that we know where to put the snap. So we're going to place the pocket lining right sides together with the pocket front and then we're going to sew where the piping is again. So I sewed on the same line as the stitching from the piping and I even tried to get just a little bit closer to the lump of the piping. That way the stitching from the piping won't show at all. And because that's an outside corner, we're going to take little pie shapes out and that's going to allow the seam allowance to lay flat inside so it's going to be a nice neat curve. So here's the pocket, it's turned right side out and I pressed it but I decided not to top stitch this. And this piece is going to be the front so now I'm going to place the pocket in the bottom right corner. We now need to mark the spot where the snap is so that we can put the other half of the snap underneath the pocket so that it lines up. I'm going to stick a pin through the fabric so that I can see where I need to mark on the back of the front piece. Okay, so I figured something out that is even better than the pin thing. I just put the other half of the snap on the back and the magnet is holding it in place. So now I'm just going to mark where that's supposed to go and then I'll be able to sew it in place. Now we're going to sew both sides and the bottom. So the pocket's pinned in place and I'm going to start by sewing right beside the piping and I put the zipper foot onto the other side so I can sew kind of in the ditch because my thread is the same color as the piping so I'm going to try to keep my stitching on that color fabric so it doesn't show very much. I stopped sewing somewhere around this corner. I can't even tell where it is. Now we're going to attach piping to the front and back pieces and I'm going to do it basically the same as I did with the pocket but I am going to leave about an inch space at the bottom without piping just so that it will be easier to hem. And I'll just show you how I do. I'm just going to kind of pull it out to the side when I sew. So you can see how the piping is sort of pulled out to the side. And when I start sewing, I'm going to sew over the lump of the piping and then I'll start sewing on the same stitch line. And you can clip the seam allowance of the piping so that it will ease around the corner. So we have the piping on both the front and the back pieces and we're ready to sew the gusset on. We're going to be sewing just the top part of the case at first and that's so that we can figure out where to put the handle hole. So first I'm going to mark the middle of the gusset and I'm going to do it on both sides of it. 
And then I'm also going to mark the middle of the top edge of the front. There's the middle. So it's going to be going right sides together like this. And we'll be sewing basically across here, just the top part, not where it's curved. And because the piping's already on there, I want to flip it over so that I can see where my stitching is and try to sew on top of that same stitch line. So you can see the gusset is right side up and the front piece is on it. And I'm ready to sew right at the beginning of that curve. And I stop sewing right before the beginning of the next curve. I sewed the top part of the gusset onto the front. And the reason why we just did the middle section is so that we can figure out where the handle hole is going to go. And every machine is going to have a different spot. So it's going to be made to fit. So I'm going to position the front centered over the machine and then just place it how it's going to go like that. Because it's not hemmed, it's going to be a little bit baggy right there. And that's okay. And I just need to mark at the top of the machine. I'm just going to feel for where the handle is and I'm going to make two marks just so that I know where that's going to go and then I'll draw it a little rectangle properly. So this is going to be up. Okay, so you can see in blue, I've got the two front corners marked and I know how big I need it to go from there. So that's where I marked the front corners of my hole and I'm going to straighten it out. I'm going to make sure it's square and straight with the piping seam so that it's not crooked. And that's just sort of like a mark to show me where it's gonna be positioned. If you look at the top of the machine, every handle is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna make it about an inch and a half deep and five and a half inches wide. So I stuck pins through the corners because I wanna mark my rectangle on the wrong side of the fabric because that's what I'll be looking at when I sew. So I have those pins in there that may I'll be able to mark it from the other side. So there's the pins coming out. I'm going to draw my rectangle at one and a half inches deep and five and a half inches wide. This is the facing for the handle hole. And I cut it out two inches bigger than the hole. So, so I ended up cutting it at two and a half by six and a half inches. And this can be with any scrap of fabric. It's not going to show much. So now we're going to place that over the marks right sides together and we'll be sewing from the wrong side of the gusset so we'll put the handle hole facing against the fabric making sure that it's overlapping a little bit and then we will flip it over and we'll sew from the mark that i made you can see where those marks are and i know that it's overlapping a little bit so i'm going to put my pins now on this side of the fabric take out the other two pins and then i'm going to sew around that rectangle when i'm making a facing like this I find it best to start in the middle of a straight line rather than at a corner. If you're starting at a corner, it's easy to back up farther than you intend to. So starting right on the middle of a straight line, it's just easier to be accurate on your corners that way. So there's the facing sewn on. This is from the right side of the gusset. So now we're going to cut sort of an X shape in the middle of this. We'll do a long straight line in the center, cut towards the corners where you stitched, and you want to cut right up to the stitching as close as you can get without actually cutting the thread, and that is going to allow this to lie nice and neat. I went ahead and trimmed the inside of the facing a little bit because it was bigger than the outside of the facing, so when I push that whole piece into the window, I don't want to have my raw edges sticking out underneath that. So you can see we've got three pretty nice corners and then one that's really puckered and I'm going to go back in and just clip a little bit closer to the stitching so that that can lay flat. Okay, now it's laying nice and flat and now I'm going to top stitch around the hole. So now it's time to finish the seam where we started sewing the middle part of the gusset. We're going to overlap the stitching where we finished the last seam and I'm going to clip into the seam allowance of the gusset as we go around the corner and then we'll just keep sewing straight down, lining up the raw edge of the gusset with the raw edge of the piping and the front. You can see that the gusset is significantly longer, but that's all right. We're going to trim it up later. To finish the other half of it, we're going to be starting sewing from the other side with the front side up 
and the gusset against the machine. And we'll just curve that corner around. We'll just keep on pulling it towards the gusset so that the raw edges line up. So I've got the whole gusset on attached to the front. And before we put the back piece on, we're gonna mark where the corners are gonna hit so that they match up the same on the front and the back. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it straight up like this and you can crease it by just finger pressing or you can do a little mark. We need that on both sides. And I'm also gonna cut off this extra and I'll just cut it straight off so that it matches up and that way we'll know that it's supposed to be that size at the bottom. Okay, so you're gonna be matching up the center of the gusset with the center of the back and the corners and the bottom seam. You may need to move the corner around but just slowly add pins and adjust as you need to. And when it's all pinned together, then you can sew it. When you're done that seam, then you can take a look at your seams, turn it right side out and check and see if there's any spots where the stitching is showing beside the piping. If you want to fix it, you can go back in and just sew that seam again and just try to get a little bit closer to the piping. Okay, so it's time to mark the hem. So to do this, I'm gonna put it on the machine. It's very cute. Okay, I think I have about an inch to turn up. I'm just gonna turn it up and put a couple pins in and then I'm gonna adjust it at the iron. Before I press the hem, I went in and trimmed down the piping at the seam just to get rid of some of the bulk in there. So I pressed it and pinned it and I just did a second check. Put it back on the machine just to make sure that it all fits okay and I really like how it looks. So now I'm going to turn the hem in one more time, press it again, and then I can sew it. So I finished the hem. There was a couple of parts, every time there was piping, it was very thick. And I made it a little bit easier by hammering those really thick parts before I sewed them. But another way to work around this would be to just zigzag that bottom edge and rather than turning it twice, just do a zigzag and then just turn it up once and stitch it down. But it's done.